our legislators to add to the 2023-24 budget are, for equitable education are staggering. But this is minimally what we need to get all of our schools on track. These staggering numbers confirm how much we have neglected our children, particularly our black and brown children in our lowest income communities. As a Unitarian Universalist minister, I see this as a moral one. It is an issue of systemic racial injustice, political greed, and corruption. Giving money to charter schools while ignoring the needs of our neediest children is a sin. It is a crime. We currently have a surplus in Pennsylvania. Whether or not your elected officials will acknowledge that. There is no better use for this surplus than to spend it on our children. All God's children deserve to get a good, solid education in a healthy environment surrounded by caring educators so they will become responsible, healthy adults and give back to our commonwealth with their minds, their resources, and their ingenuity. That takes an equitable and fair state budget for our schools. Our children are our future. We need to care for them. Good morning, everyone. My name morning. is Andrew Ford. I'm a current senior at Upper End High School. And as part of my soon leaving the K-12 system, I stay here alongside my fellow advocates and hope to leave my school district and so many others across our commonwealth better than when I started school. Prior to high school, I hadn't thought about the inequalities of, that affect our public schools from funding to disciplinary issues, but I quickly noticed I wasn't getting the best resources available for my education. And just last year, as a junior, I had a textbook that was published in 2017 for my AP English and Language Composition class. And finally, having the resources my peers and I deserve made me realize what has been missing from my education all along. Our public schools are the backbones of our communities and deserve to be treated as such. A student's quality of education should not depend on their zip codes. We're educating the next generation of Americans. We deserve classrooms that aren't overcrowded, newer, up-to-date textbooks, and opportunities to succeed in extracurriculars and sports. But this is all possible with more funding in already struggling school districts. We, the students of the Commonwealth, call for equitable investments in our future starting within our classrooms. We are the future of the state and our nation. We cannot be competitive on a national and international scale if we aren't getting a quality education. And today's students are tomorrow's leaders, and if those in power fail to invest in us, they fail to invest in our commonwealth and our nation. Thank you. Because we heard the course ruling. We hear the concern. 
their parents. No one told us. We see these kids every single day to our mentoring programs. We talk to the parents. We talk about children who have no teachers since October. No teachers because the school can provide the teachers and counselors that our children deserve. We are creating an injustice, an injustice system that is, uh, is not letting our children succeed. So, I will keep with my screen. <laughs> with with a historical budget surplus this year, we cannot miss the opportunity to use these resources to bring more balance to education for the Pennsylvania. Our children should not have to wait. We have a whole generation of children who have needs. We have failed them. Stop it. We need to do better in our communities, in our state, and in our nation. Thank you.
Low wealth, I'm sorry, we need socially responsible and civically engaged students, and we need to start them very, very early. Yes. Low wealth school districts need the low, no, sorry. Low wealth school districts need the opportunity to thrive. Charter schools have 50% success rate and receive the most education funding, keeping low wealth districts in a chokehold. Thus, we need around $4.6 billion in basic education funding and level up funding, in addition, well, I'm sorry, and level up funding, in addition to $1.1 billion of student, of special education funding. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Work. For example, what is where the world and 
and a peace community. He is a great word. He is the number of personal inter interpreting support. Both the parents, teacher communication, and support for ESN program. More students are eager to their focus or learn. In addition to the, to the lack of support for a school program, children need to support in order to understand and develop their learning. If we have the opportunity to have all the necessary, the necessary materials, our children working at labor work and work not have to solve a problem by changing from a secondary school to a university level. On February 7, the Pennsylvania School Finance System was declared unconstitutional. The Supreme Court ordered that the state of the public education finance system be rectified. And it is for the for that for this reason that we are here to ask legislators to bring the the distribution of funds so that they may legislate priority. And together with Governor with Governor Shapiro, they provide adequate and detailed funding for the school. I am grateful that this situation that we are feeling every day as part of fighting for the status that our children have in their daily life in the struggle to learn depending on the efficiency of the school and they have has now been taken into consideration. They want, they want, I support that the farm be shared with quality Yet, 
students who attend an inadequately funded school are less likely to have access to the school counselor. When one of those students who is experiencing anxiety or depression does not have a counselor to go to, those challenges do not just go away. It means even more pressure falls on classroom teachers and administrators and families to respond. Needs that at times those teachers, administrators, and families are ill-equipped to respond to like counselors are. Here's some other hard facts our students have to face. Most Pennsylvania school counselors are working with significantly higher caseloads than are recommended. And those ratios are highest in schools with the most student need, schools that also happen to be inadequately funded. Funding is the primary driver, not student need, of the kind of services students get. The proposed school mental health block grants and the governor's budget proposal are a great start. But our children need schools that are fully equipped through predictable and equitable funding to support their increasingly intense needs. And in closing, I'd like to quote another Pennsylvania education hero, Thaddeus Stevens, who once said, many of Pennsylvania's children are like bright intellectual gems. If only they were able to be highly polished. But for too long, too disgracefully long, we have permitted them to lie buried in dark, unfathomable caves. The longer we wait to make good on our constitutional obligation to provide a thorough and efficient system of public education, a birthright to every son and daughter of Pennsylvania, the longer our children will remain in the struggle of the dark, unfathomable caves without the supports we know would help them thrive untapped of their fullest potential to themselves and to all of us as a commonwealth. Let us be the generation that finally makes this right. Yes. Thank you. This is amazing. Good morning. Good morning. I think we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kyle Anderson. I'm here with my colleagues from the Urban League of Philadelphia. And we are here because the Urban League is so pleased to be a part of this uh, of this initiative. We are a 106-year-old nonpartisan civil rights organization aligned with the National Urban League that's been a tireless advocate for the advancement of educational equity and the empowerment of black and underserved communities. We're proud to join our statewide peers and partners in the uh, PA School Board uh, campaign to ensure that all students, regardless of their zip code, have access to a 21st century education. Here in Pennsylvania, public education is the best and most impactful way to upend inequity and to intentionally create equitable opportunities for families, children, and youth. We're here today to demand adequately and equitably funded schools that offer excellence in education so that all of our students can reach their full potential and contribute to the future of the Commonwealth. And I want to just take one moment and applaud these young people who spoke today. Those who spoke and those who are here as well. I don't know what I was doing when I was their age, but I certainly was not standing in front of a podium speaking as, uh, as eloquently as they are. Um, so we should uh, fight for them. We should continue to support them. Um, and I'm just really proud and feel good about the fact that we have young people like those who are part of us. Thank you very much. Hi. My name is St. Valentino, and him. I'm the founder of the Black Liberation Autonomous Collective and the program manager for the Young Women's Action Collective. We are a national collective of organizers, practitioners, and students. In early 2021, we released a national storytelling tool called State of the Young. It reached over 21 neighborhoods in the state. 41% of the youth we engage with has been impacted by the lack of funding for education, but have seen more investment in police. This affects the state of young, young people, black and brown people, in various ways. Last summer, we supplied 90 plus families with school supplies in the summer. This does not fully show a fraction of how students who go without essentials every day. For example, Pittsburgh is one of the few districts in the country that has a separate police department in school than a regular police department. Students deserve access to updated supplies, tech, therapists, mental health practitioners, not more cops, and not 
more class of crucial funding. Students deserve a fully funded, culturally competent educational experience. So we are here demanding that policymakers invest in our babies over billionaires and corporations. Where do you stand?
We also want to urge the governor to budget $300 million for the Level Up program, which will help support the 100 poorest districts in the state until the funding formula is fixed. Not prioritizing funds for, level, for the Level Up program means that all the progressive work we've made these past two years will come to a halt. We will once again see rich schools give their students what they need to succeed while leaving their students in poor districts right where they are. We can't go back. This is not right. We require funds into Level Up, and we need funds for Level Up. We know that Level Up program is not by itself the solution for the big problem with school finance. But with Governor Shapiro and the state legislator, we are hopeful that they will develop and implement a comprehensive and lasting solution for years to come. Good morning. Good morning. Thank morning. you all for being here. My name is Catherine Mix. I'm the Philadelphia president of the NAACP. I'm here to join not only the Black Voters Matter, but all of these organizations that are standing up for our children and our children's education. The Level Up program and all of the funding needed by our legislators and, and our Governor Josh Shapiro is the most important thing for our children's future. We stand here and we will continue to come and stand in support of our children because our children are the future and their education is there's nothing more important than their education so they can do what we are asking for them to do and act that is to be our future. So please take this opportunity to not only listen to everyone that spoke today, but in our legislators to hear what is happening in our schools, what is happening to our children, and, and, and please give us the funding that we need so that, that our children can be in the future. Thank you. Thank you. 